honest, revealing. The stories hitting home from Wall Street to Main Street. Award-winning journalist David Faber hosts CNBC's Business Nation. Where do great business ideas come from? Sometimes you're sitting on them. We went to Connecticut and found a man who reinvented, of all things, the beanbag chair. He explains how he did it in tonight's How I Made My Millions. Today, they come in a variety of sizes, shapes, and colors. But before Lovesack had a name, Sean Nelson had an idea to make a more comfortable beanbag just for himself. Armed with fabric, foam stuffing, and a pair of scissors, he went to work. After about three weeks of cutting stuff up, the thing was finally ready to use. We took it to the drive-in movies, we took it to, you know, the lake, we'd sleep on it. We had like, you know, five people sleeping on this thing. And every, everywhere I took it, though, everyone was always like, where did you get that thing? It's so cool, it's huge, and, you know, I've never seen anything like that. And to his dismay, everyone wanted one. And I said, there's no way I'm making another one. It took me three weeks to do it, and uh, not something I'm going to do. Nelson called it his not a bean bag. And after years of requests, he decided to go into business. I was trying to think of a business name that was sort of hippie, 70s, love, peace, hate, war, bag, you know, bean bag, love, bag, love sack. Oh, that sounds cool. And we'd, you know, take these things to Oktoberfest, uh, the boat show, the home show, the car show, wherever we could get a little booth and we'd sell these things out of a van. Constantly broke and struggling, Nelson wanted to bag the love sack. But family and friends kept him from calling it quits. And in 2001, he and his cousin opened their first location in Utah. We opened the store hoping to sell a super sack a day. We did far better. In five weeks, we did $120,000 in sales. So you can come on over and try this one out. These oversized seats have a patented process to ease transport. Sacks all come shrunken down in a duffel bag to about one-eighth of their original size. So you just get it home, unzip it, take it out. It's like a little shrunken raisin. And from there, it takes about an hour or two to fluff up sometimes up to a day. And in no time, we'll have that. We have the smallest store in the mall, but we sell the biggest thing in the mall. We are inventing a new genre of furniture that is practical. Every sack, every accessory, every bar stool, every pillow, everything we sell is uh, changeable, washable, modular, and it's totally unique. And Nelson is sitting on a gold mine doing $15 million a year in sales, which he says he'll double next year. And with a personal cut of nearly $2 million a year, he's not sitting on his assets. Climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, traveled the world from Australia to Asia to the islands. Uh, my wife and I opened a business on the side. And uh, all the celebrities that love SAC got to hang out with them, meet you know, hundreds of people that I wouldn't have otherwise ever had the chance to meet. We've taken it now and, and grown it into something bigger than just just a sack full of foam, you know, we've grown into a brand. It's a vibe, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole culture. <sighs> nice. Sean Nelson isn't sitting still. He's expanding beyond furniture and has rolled out a line of love sack clothing and bags. 